Welcome back to Patriarchs and Prophets. Um, what a privilege it is to be able to reflect on history, to be able to have insights into the experience of other people. Um, we have nothing to fear for the future, but except we forget the way the Lord has led us as, as humans in the past and his teachings. I want to uh, address today um, the life of Enoch, but in particular your life also. Today's title is, enti is, is entitled uh, The Long Walk. Life is a walk. Life is a journey. And we travel from our birth, unbeknownst to us, whether we believe in God or whether we, we don't, we are moving in a direction through time. And we're changing our characters, develop, even if we give it no thought, no, uh, no consideration of who we become, we will become something. And when, all, when all is said and done, what you become really does matter. Humanly speaking, we aim for the highest. But the highest is subjective to your perceptions. What do you deem as, as the highest? Most, as, as in, a general, in a general sense, most students seek for the highest grades. Most um, individuals seek for the highest paying careers or if you're a sports sportsman you're, you're seeking for the highest position in 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 your league or what you know whatever whatever um, you pursue we generally will seek for the highest but if we don't then we just cruise through life some people just are happy with with really nothing nothing uh, to motivate them they just live for the moment the gratitude that's right in front of them, the pleasure that's, that's right there, and they, they, they don't consider delayed gratification as something of value. But studies show that when we delay gratification, when we give perspective to, to our journey, when we have an end goal in mind, and we, and we perhaps with, forego certain pleasures in the, in the, in the moment, we we will be better off, whether it be in a temporal sense, whether it's getting up early and, and training or, or studying for an exam or, or working to get to the top of your career and, and foregoing certain pleasures and you pursue that, you, you will succeed much better than if you just, if you just plod it along. But this is the thing about the journey of life is that when seeking the highest, it's only according to our perspective. But if we take the scriptures, which is an awesome privilege to have, a book of people, a book of people and their journeys, where they came from, where they're going, what happened, what was going on in their minds. This book is an incredible value. And it's not, the Bible is not is not to be studied for, for argumentative sake or, or just to prove that my theories and my beliefs are right and yours are wrong. The Bible is extremely personal in that, it, in that it's presenting a person, in particular, Jesus Christ. The Word who was God became flesh and dwelt among us and developed a character. He died, but because he was the Prince of Life, he rose again. And now that, that person, that character, has, is calling all the people through the scriptures and even today to go on a journey with him, with an end in mind, with a, with a purpose, with a, with a goal, with a high calling. And this book gives a perspective that's not natural to us, that we can, we can journey on a path that leads to the throne of heaven. I mean, that's almost unbelievable. It's almost something like, that's just a fairy tale. But it's true. And you'll never know that it's true unless you start walking it yourself. You have to personally experience it by revelation, the character of God, and, and what it's like to walk with God. 
And, and, and so I want to challenge you in, as we go through this story of Enoch, I want to challenge you to take a look at your life. Take a look at where you've come from and where you're going. What, is, what are you trying to achieve in your life? What, what is the whole net, net worth of, of, of what you're doing? The book of Hebrews gives, gives this um, line of, of, of stories of individuals who decided to, to take a journey with God. And right from the outset, the the, the two brothers that, that began uh, from Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, they took two different paths. They went to two different places. And there was uh, enmity or uh, um, aggression between, between these two, two paths and ultimately Cain killed Abel. Seth then took, took that lineage and continued the path that Abel had, tre- uh, had decided to, to walk. And the Bible gives this, this in, in Hebrews 11, gives a line of all these people, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and it goes on. But at the end, it talks about many other people and how they, they went through an adventure, a, 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 a mind-blowing um, journey I just want to read here from Hebrews 11, uh, speaking of, of all the other people that, that the Bible speaks about. In verse 32, Hebrews 11, verse 32, And what shall I say? more say? For the time would fail me to tell you of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Japheth, and, and David, and Samuel, and of prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned the flight of the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they may obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings, and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted. They were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in the dens and the caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Here the scripture is, is clearly laying out a line of, of individuals who, who went through uh, major trials because they decided to walk with Christ. There was people who were delivered, there were people who were not delivered. But the scripture concludes and says, at the end of the chapter, it says that these people were not made perfect without us. In other words, God is looking for individuals to walk with. But those individuals make up a greater body of people. The greater body of people are to, are to be to him like, like a, a, a bride is to a husband. It, it, there's, a, there's a city of people, a, a whole community. And God's saying that these people have died in the past and yet they're waiting for others to join them in this journey. The story of Enoch is purely told for our sake, so that we have the opportunity of walking with God also. Turn with me to to Genesis chapter 5 and we'll just touch on the story of Enoch, Genesis chapter 5, Genesis 5 and starting in verse 21. Genesis 5 and verse 21, and it says, Enoch lived 65 years and 
begat Methuselah. He had Methuselah as his son. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Just in a few verses, you see this individual who grew to be 65 years old and then he had a child. And at that point, the Bible indicates that his walk started at that point. He, he, something happened when he had a child that made him realise that there was a relationship to be had with the God of heaven. Now, not everyone has, had, uh, ha- has a good picture of a, of a, of a father. There's many people who have been let down by a father. And so the idea of a loving heavenly father is actually quite hard to grasp. But if you put yourself in a parent situation where, where perhaps you've suffered as a child, or perhaps you've had a great upbringing and you can relate to a loving father. If you project the, the ideal relationship between a, a parent and a child... And you're the parent. What would your response be to that child? If that child needed something, if that child um, was needing development, was needing education, was needing um, guidance, was needing um, just basic things for survival, wouldn't your, your heart would be there to give to the child? And that's us as humans, as faulty humans with, who are tainted with selfishness. We're all tainted with this selfishness. And yet we still have the capacity to love, love our ch- a child and, to, and to, to give it good gifts. And if we, being faulty, know how to do that, how much more? How much more would the, would, would the Father in heaven want to give us good gifts? And have a relationship with his creation. And so this, this awakening happened in Enoch and he began to walk with God. He went on a journey. I want to, I want to turn to, back to uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and, and read a portion about Enoch in Hebrews 11 and, and starting in verse 5. Hebrews 11 verse 5 and 6. Hebrews 11 and verse 5 and 6. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. (laughs) He he cheated death. Enoch cheated death. (laughs) He... He is one of, one of two human beings that have never experienced death. Enoch and Elijah. And here we have, what a privilege to have this, this knowledge that death wouldn't hold us if we can walk with God. If you embark in a walk with God, you come to the pointy end of life when when life becomes so raw that everything that's happened in, in our past and all the materials we've accumulated become nothing. At that point in of life, when most people then start inquiring about God at that point. If you walk with God and you come to that point, it's not even an issue. Death doesn't have a sting when you walk with God. Death has, n- has no power. It's asleep. As far as, God, as God's recollection is, you will sleep and then he'll raise you back. And so, what's there to lose? What's there to lose in deciding to say, you know what, I'm going to give God a chance to walk with him. There's many people that don't even know how to walk with God. Many Christians that don't even know how to walk with God. They know the, 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 the theory or, or the... Um, the um, 
analogy of walking with God, but I mean, really, we're not walking down the street with God next to us. It's a, it's an, it's a terminology that describes our life's journey in communion with God. And I want to touch on these things that if you, if you decide to walk with God, there are some certain things you'll need to know of how to walk with God. It's a long walk. It's, it's a walk that, that requires the rest of your life. It requires endurance. It's not, a, it's not a sprint. It's not a trot down this corner, corner store. It's a lifelong journey. And the, and, and the journey is not promised to be easy. It's not promised to be carefree and no trials. But what is promised is that at the end of the journey, there is eternal life. And not just eternal life, eternal life with your best friend. The person who you've journeyed with, the person who you've come to know, that person of the Bible. If you study the Bible for, it, with, for any other reason other than to find a person in here, you will miss the mark. You will read it wrong. The, Phar- the Pharisees and the Jewish people of, of Christ's day, they, they searched the scriptures, the Bible says, they searched the scriptures and they thought they had eternal life. They, they had their readings and they had their prayers. But Christ challenged them and said, they, talking of the scriptures, testify of me as a person. And yet you don't want me. And so here were these religious people studying the Bible and completely missing the person in the Bible. The person to walk with. The person that... that is your companion in life's journey. That's the purpose of the scriptures, is to introduce you to this companion who is wanting to walk with you. So here in in Hebrews 11, we saw that Enoch cheated death. He pleased God. Notice verse 6, it says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must, there's two things here, must believe that he is, And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So there's two elements. If you decide, yep, I'm going to give, a, give God a chance and actually walk with him. And this is what it would look like. First, you need to believe that God exists. That he is. But it, but, and that's a critical point because, look, there's many people that don't believe in God. People that believe that God is a, is a crutch for weak-minded people. Or that God has no interest in us. And, and look, if that's your belief, that's your choice. You can believe that. But think about what, what net gain are you going to get from that? What does it give you? And what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? If God is real and the Bible is true, who, who, where's the loss? Do a, do a risk analysis and you'll find that there's no risk in walking with God. Okay, if at the end of the day God isn't real, well, you haven't lost anything. But he certainly is. But if you assume he's not and he is, you've lost everything. So first you need to believe that God is. God is the creator. God is a God of love. The fact that we have good in us as humans that want to love, that like peace, that like, that, that pers- want to pursue the highest in, in our own human perspective. We do, many people do pursue a high, a, a, a high endeavor and, and that's good. But it's of no value if it, if it leads to death still. Death is our enemy. Death we must cheat. So he that comes to God must believe that he is, number one. Number two, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There is a, there is a reward for diligently seeking God. And that reward is what Enoch experienced. He became a friend of God. He pleased God, the scriptures say. 
So if we're going to walk with God, there are three principles that I want to just touch on here. If we're, if we're, if we're pursuing a walk, we need to be moving. Because if we're not moving, we're not walking. And so there must be progression. And there will be progression. There will be progression. But on what path? You have to ask yourself, what path am I progressing on? And if you're pursuing your walk with God, there must be progression. The second is that there must be communion. Why would you go on a walk with someone and never communicate? And so there's, there's, there's two things to ensure a walk with God, and that is talking and listening. Talking and listening. You talk to God and you listen. There's this, this two, two-way relationship. It's like giving and receiving. There's, to, to put it another way, we desire to love and be loved. And you can see this two-way two -way relationship to love, to give love, and to receive love. God's the same. He wants to love, and he does love, but he wants to receive love. And so there's this talking, listening, giving, receiving, being loved, loving back. And what does that look like? I want to read a couple of, a couple of scriptures. Uh, John chapter 8 and verse 12. John chapter 8 and verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12, it says, And then, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Here the scripture points out firstly that in a walk with, with God, God is the leader. God is, is, God knows the way. He knows the path. Uh, he's not lost. It's not just a wandering around. When, when we disobey God, when we decide to murmur and complain and do our own things and reject God, yeah, we, we will wander around life aimlessly. You could wander around for 40 years and go nowhere. But it's through following and obedience and 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 listening and talking and following and listening and talking and following on, on a large scale, on a diligent scale, on a scale that's not just for a day or two. It's a it's, this is a lifelong relationship. And it doesn't mean that you can't make any missteps. It doesn't mean that you won't fall over on the pathway. It doesn't mean that you won't get to places that are tight or hard to get through. But what it does mean is that if you keep talking and you keep listening and you keep moving, you will end up where Enoch ended up. You, you, will, you will see Enoch. You'll be at the same place. And so he says, He that follows me shall not walk in, in darkness. And so there's an illumination, there's a revelation. And here's the challenge to you if you, if you assume... If you, if, you, if you assume God isn't real and that the Bible is just hocus pocus and, and of no value, you just haven't seen it yet. That's all. I can testify from my experience that, that it's solid. It's a solid experience. You've got to taste and see. I mean, you can't, even, even my testimony to you just won't replace your experience. You have to taste and see that God is good. You have to make the walk yourself to go, oh, that's real. Because it's a matter of, of being in darkness and then walking with God and having light shining around. And all of a sudden you can see the reality of things. You can see the purpose of life. You can see the motivation for, for walking with God. You can see the blessings and you can see the love. I want to read another text in, in John 
uh, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John, sorry, not chapter 5. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. First John chapter 1 and verse 5 through to 7. This is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we walk with him in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship. And this is this listening and talking, giving and receiving. If we have this fellowship and we walk, so we're moving and we're talking with God and we're listening to God, we will be cleansed from all sin. As in that's the net value of walking with God. He will cl cleanse you. You will be cleansed. Not by virtue of your effort trying to cleanse yourself. Not by, not by just raw human grit. It's a calculated path that God knows we need to walk on and as we follow him individually he will bring us to places that are calculated to cleanse us what do we have to keep doing we have to keep listening we have to keep talking and we have to keep moving they're the three things keep listening keep talking keep moving that's what enoch was doing john and so we, you think, okay, that, sound, that sounds good on paper. It sounds, sounds yeah, I, I can listen to God and talk with God. But there, there is a challenge in this. And, 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 and I'm going to present a little bit about why so many people decide not to walk with God. Or, or why so many Christians perhaps start walking with God and then stop and just stay in a contented religious setting and 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 i'll be honest the christian religion throughout all ages whether it be catholicism or whether it be different different uh, denominations or even if it's judaism with their religion or they have let people down religion has let people down there are many people who are not christians purely because of other christians because the because the way they were treated by others but if that was the case, then Christ wouldn't have even walked with God. How was Christ treated by the religious people of his day? They called for his crucifixion. I, I'm, I'm encouraging you not to be put off by the bad behaviour of other Christians. Don't be put off walking with God because an institution... Uh, did horrendous evils because that's not the representation of the scripture the bible even will tell you that time and time again the the established institutions of of religion throughout the bible history was was continually faulty continually fell apart continually went wayward and jesus came in person to show the way And so if you're going to walk with God, you need to make a decision. You need to make a decision irrespective of the behaviours of other professed Christians. Don't base your walk with God on other people's behaviour. John chapter 3, famous text in verse 16. We want to read verse 17. John 3. It says here, John 3 and verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
Christ came to show us the way to say, hey, this is the, this is the path that we need to walk in order to, to be saved from, from the death that is already condemning our world. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already. The sentence of death is already here. So, so God isn't coming to, to say, oh, you're a bad person and you're no good and you're not good enough to walk with me. No, he knows exactly what you're like. And he's still calling you. Faults and all, it doesn't matter. It says here, This is the condemnation, that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than, than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So here is this point that when we walk with God and he is light and we start to see clearly, we will start to see our own poverty. And it's not that it became, we became poor once we walked with Christ. It's just now we know, we can see it. Because before we walk with Christ, or if we, if we like the idea of walking with Christ, and we say, yeah, yeah, I like the idea of it, but yet we don't walk with Christ, and we think that we're rich and increased with goods. But yet the reality is that we don't know that we are poor, miserable, blind, wretched and naked. That, that we're blind, we can't see. We, can't, we can see other people. You can see the faults in everyone else but not in yourself. But when you walk with God, this illumination starts to do something that is quite uncomfortable to the human heart, the, the selfish human heart. And that is, it starts to reveal evilness, the evil, evil deeds and, and wickedness. And so what were, the, what were the things that we had to do when we walked with God? We had to listen and we had to talk. We had to listen and we had to talk. And so the word of God is powerful and, and, is, and is sharp and it can, it can discern the thoughts and the intents of our heart. A walk with God is extremely personal and it starts to, to illuminate the, the human heart. And in this illumination, we have a choice to make. Are we going to hold on to perhaps our cherished, um, how do I put it? Are we going to hang on to our cherished uh, attributes of self that are wrong? We might say, no, Lord, I, I'm, not, I'm not impatient or I'm not arrogant. That's just me. That's who I am. Who you are is completely transient. Who you are, who you were yesterday and who you are tomorrow can, can be different things. We're, we're on a journey, whether you know it or not. Time, time will evolve who, who you are. But if you walk with God, you'll become who, who you're always meant to be. And that is in the image of God. Loving, caring, patient, kind. And so if you just... Picture with me for a moment, you've got a backpack and in the backpack are your goods and your goods aren't good. There's envy, there's jealousy, there's arrogance, there's pride and, and you've, got to, you've got to follow him and the path that he's going to take is narrow and then your bag won't fit and you realise, oh, I can't come. He's calling you, come. And I, oh, I can't. It's like, well, take the bag off. You're like, oh, I'll take the bag off and look inside and there's my pride or my arrogance. I go, oh, no, I'd, I want to keep that. And you go, but I can't come. And Christ is like, well, give it to me. Give me the bag. I'm like, I don't want to. I want to keep it. And at this point... We're at, a, we're, at a, we're at a road where we need, to, we need to make a choice of do we keep moving by giving his, 
the instruction is give me your faults, give me, give me your problems and receive his righteousness, receive his character? Or do I just stop moving? And this is the big test in walking with God. God will bring us through a place that will cleanse us. And I'm keen. I'm keen to be cleansed. I've seen, I've, I've, I have walked enough with God to see certain things. And there, look, there's plenty I don't understand about myself. There's plenty that, that I'm yet to learn. But the, the faults that I see that have become real to me in my, in my family and, and different perhaps impatience or, or, or greed. And God shone a light on that. And I'm saying, I want it gone. I want to give it to you. And so I, I make, the, make the choice to give, give my sins through confession, through repentance to Christ and keep walking. And yes, I may, not, um, I may still f- stumble and fall, but the lesson of Noah teaches us the great value of waiting. And we want to, we want to uh, consider uh, Noah in our next presentation and the value of, of the ability to wait, wait on the Lord in his time. Things, amazing things will happen. So I hope you're encouraged to journey with God as Enoch did and that you'll give it a try. Amen. Hi there, Jonathan here from Voices in the Cities. I really hope you enjoyed this message. If you'd like to dig more, check out the description right below. Don't forget to subscribe right here so that you don't miss out on any videos we post. And then if you want to watch more, right up there, next video. See you next time.